Hello homebrewers, welcome. Hope you're having a fantastic one. Um, we're making a video. Oh yes, the part two to the cherry mead, otherwise known as the Viking blood mead, if you want to be all fancy about it. But it is a modern recipe. It's not an old school recipe. So, you know, it's, it's cherry mead. So if you haven't seen the part one video, I will stick the link at the top so you can watch it. But today we're going to be Funny enough, checking it with a hydrometer, seeing what it roughly finished at, because, well, it maxed out the hydrometer, so it's going to be somewhere. Pretty cool. We're going to bottle it up, and we're also going to drink it, because this is a rapid drinking mead. How do we make it rapid drinking? We make it sweet. Now, for our particular case, we actually did something that uh, is kind of a rookie mistake, but it can be really handy if you're lazy like we are, because, yeah. Easy. Um, so the idea behind that was was to add way too much sugar, in our case honey, inside here so the yeast could only ferment as much as it could and then it would kill itself and uh, we'd be left with a nice sweet quick drinking mead. Let's, let's take a look. Let's, let's have a look. Whoa. Wow. So it smells very alcoholic very alcoholic. It also has a very nice sort of, it's not cherries because I think, well I know that this is not sweet. Uh, something happened, don't know what it was, uh, but this thing has um, it basically fermented every single piece of sugar in here, which was unexpected. Now I think that could be due to the cherries themselves or the cherries in combination with the yeast nutrient we added in. I have no idea. All I know is this doesn't normally happen. Now one of my patrons, Ben, has also made the exact same recipe I did and even used the same yeast. He got the same result. Um, that's, that's a bit odd, because normally that doesn't happen. Universal wine yeast normally conks out at about 15, 16%. I know some of you will be like, oh, I can get 18%, but it takes a very long time, not in a one month period. You'd normally have to rack it off and let it do its thing again and with it. That's just too much effort for what we do. One and done. That's how we like it. So yeah, some experimentation is going to have to be done with uh, with some cherries just to see if this was a fluke that happened twice or do cherries act as a yeast booster? Don't know. That's a yeah. It's another video. So let's um, let's let's just get into bottling and you know testing with a hydrometer and drinking because that is very important. Oh yeah. So as always, we're gonna start off with the first and most important task, sterilizing everything. Everything needs to be sterilized because, um, well, we don't want it to get infected. I know it's something quick drinking, but if you're storing it, you, you don't want it to go off and you just don't want funky stuff. Because who, who wants funky stuff? We want booze. So I have sterilized my worktop, the bottles, the siphoning tube, the hydrometer, I mean, everything. Everything I'm going to be using has been sterilized, either with bleach and washing up liquid or boiling water. Use your sterilizer of choice or sanitizer, because they are different things. So first things first, we need to take a hydrometer reading to see where this finished, because it smells very strong. I will, I will say it does smell strong. So uh, I can't dump the hydrometer in, not enough room. Instead, I have sterilized this tiny little glass don't ask me why I have them, I just weird glass. So my hands have been sterilized as well, kind of by accident, but if you're sterilizing everything, of course your hands are gonna get sterilized. So let's just make our life easy. So let's pour some in. It has a beautiful color to it. I mean, that is, that's a good color and it is beautiful and clear. So we know it's done its job. Cherries obviously like floating on the top. Don't know why, but they do. Okay, the hydrometer is uh, is here, and it is very, very slightly off. That should be up here. <laughs> it's not. Uh, unbelievably, this is like 991. It's in between 2 and 990. That is odd, uh, especially for using a honey. Honey is normally finished, you know, 995, 9, you know, 1, something like that. But this, not so much. 
So we roughly guesstimated it was at uh, 1 100, something like that, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, it was 1 110, wasn't it? Something like that. So that was, uh, we're going to just guess, at about 17-ish percent from what we know, because uh, the hydrometer is not really too accurate on that. So, yeah, that is a little bit higher. I mean, it should have finished probably 16, leaving, leaving a bit of percentage, but this is pretty much dry. And it smells it too. But it does smell good. Just like hardcore mead. So, those hardcore mead drinkers would be very happy. Uh, me, I was actually trying to fail on purpose, and I failed at failing. Is that a win? Who knows? Anyway, so there we go, and um, let's pop that there. So we want to know how it tastes straight out the bat. No! As a rapid, quick drinking mead, so I'm going to use my fancy glass. Pour she in. It does have a pretty color. Cheers. Wow. 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 It's smooth. Very smooth. Mmm. Okay, so all joking aside, currently it tastes mm, alcoholic. Oh, it is very, very nice, but it is pretty much dry. Alcohol, warming, warming, burning. Cherry. A little bit of honey. Yeah, there you go. That whole 0 0.01 made all the difference. Job done. We're done. See you later, guys. <laughs> now, in all fairness, though, um, it is very nice, but it is very strong. And we don't want to age this. We want to drink this really quickly. So, um, no, I'm going to drink some more. Why not? It is good enough to drink now, but um, we wanted a sweet mead. So we're going to make sweet mead. Right, so first step is bottling. Nice and easy, nothing, nothing too difficult. So we've got our tub and hopefully we can do this. I don't have a brewing peg. Of course I don't have a brewing peg. I always forget the brewing peg. Brewing peg is very important, even though I forget it all the time. Brewing peg. Found the peg. Finally, I have a whole box of these, yet I keep losing the box when I go looking for it. As soon as I'm looking for something else, I find them, and then I promptly lose them again. Anyway, so I have the brewing peg. It's just a lot easier to have something to clip on the side, so you don't have to hold on and try and do this with bottles and tubes. It's, it's a pain. So let us create a siphon. I've actually got my sterilized and rinsed tube here. So I just block one end. It actually is full of water. It creates a very, very cheap, simple siphon. A bit like the auto siphons, except um, it's really cheap because this is a cheap piece of tube. And it is thin bore tube because it disturbs everything less. So in it goes, hopefully. There we go. Something like that. <laughs> I'm feeling special. So let's grab our first bottle. Looking lovely. Just double check. Yeah, it smells fresh, but not bleachy. So we just need to pop it down lower. I'll just pull back. Then uh, then the tube. And hopefully, you can see liquid. Oh yes, a mild pink liquid. It stops as soon as you pull it up, almost as if. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to do these six bottles. I'm going to save you watching uh, this because it's going to take a little bit. But it, it, it has bottle appeal. See you in a bit. Oh, that's good. So we ended up with five bottles of booze actually looks pretty good now i know what you're gonna say i know what some of you are gonna say it's not perfectly clear we didn't add pectolase so uh cherries are a fruit and they contain pectin 
and uh, yeah it does have a little bit of pectin haze but just add pectolase if that's your thing you know, it, it doesn't affect the actual look this is what it looks like in a glass uh, it looks pretty much crystal clear yeah i'm gonna drink some of this surprisingly good for rocket fuel Whew, warm so i ended up with five bottles the last bottle is still in here but uh the siphon kept getting clogged and i was just like nah, pff, i can take that at my own leisure so we've got five bottles as you will notice we did not or i did not fill these to the top got these four here and i've got this one here which got a little bit more of a gap this is going to be our testing bottle now if you are using sweetener or sugar uh, you don't need to do this but because we wanted this to be cherry mead I'm gonna be using honey as my sweetener uh, I actually took the time to get liquid honey not the set honey because that would take forever to try and dissolve in here so let's see what we can do with this got my funnel it was scorched with boiling water I actually used it for the siphoning and had a little sieve over the top to catch the large chunks of uh, cherry because I didn't want cherry in here I just wanted the liquid which I have got so uh, what I'm using is the clear honey from Aldi yeah I think that's the one the one I usually get it from cost me another one pound 15 I think it was and well smells like honey so what we're gonna be doing is back sweetening I have got a 30 mil or one eighth of a cup measuring thing because uh, it's bigger than a teaspoon and uh, let's let's just add some in let's let's make this taste like a sweet cherry mead so uh, here we go so since honey is kind of liquid we needed to leave some extra space and uh, that's about one let's start off with a, a cheeky 60 mil ish trying to make sure it goes down the funnel Oh, I so I, I want to lick the honey. I want to lick the spoon, but then I have to clean it. Oh, it's a hard life. Right, that will do for now. So just let the honey drip. Looks pretty nice as it is. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so I'm going to shake this up. Uh, also, finishes off degassing since this is a still drink. So, uh, seen a few. So after a bit of shaking, this is what we've got. Looks uh, pretty much the same. It's got a little bit of film on the top. Now all of the sugar should be dissolved. Uh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> a little bit of sweetness really does change the profile of pretty much anything. Let's pour a little glass out. Don't mind, this is the testing bottle. So we added in 60 mil from the measuring cup and probably 50 mil went in of honey. So let's see what that tastes like. Wow. Woohoo! So it has, well, funny enough, a lot more flavor. Um, the alcohol is still there. It's still letting you know that uh, it's a high percentage booze, which I guess is not a bad thing, but still, I've got to try it again. Mm. So before that uh, alcohol takes hold, you get the sweet honey flavor, and then you get the cherries, and then you get very warm, because uh, uh, funny enough, pretty high alcohol so not quite there in my opinion still the dry is drinkable this one is drinkable just not how I envisioned it to be so guess what I have another one of these silly glasses so I think instead of just doing one at a time I'm gonna add in another two of these another 60 mil that's hundred and twenty mil of uh, honey that is uh, yeah it's 
We're not trying to lose weight, it's fine. So we're done that part as well. So uh, let's see what this one's like. Ooh, a little bit of gas came out. Lovely. Ooh, okay. We're getting into the right ballpark, which is nice. Bigger glass. So I'm really starting to get honey and cherry coming out of this. And uh, well, it does smell alcoholic still, but that's not the first thing you smell. Still looks so pretty. Cheers. Woo! That's where I'm gonna stop. I could do one more, but that would be too sweet for my liking. It tastes good. Oh, that's good. It's still got that alcoholic kick. On the tip of your mouth, you've got honey taste, and then you have the, the cherries in the aftertaste along with a lovely warming. This make a good, fantastic winter's drink. Shame it's summer. Anyway, so uh, I'm gonna drink some more of this. Cheers. I'll pour myself a bit more. It's actually very, very pleasant. Now the first one tasted a lot like rocket fuel. Uh, the second one, slight cherry notes, more alcohol still. And then this one, which we just went whole hog and just doubled what we had it in. Actually pretty good. Um, I'm gonna stop there and just leave it as is. Kind of very drinkable. It is sort of the iconic mead, strong, sweet enough, honey tones, and funny enough, cherry. So that, that's, it's a success in that respect because we ended up making a quick and easy drinking mead. It will get better with age, but, you know, who wants to wait like seven, eight, seven months a year? I mean, we want to drink it now. So these bottles are not going to be sweetened or back sweetened, simply because I can just add the honey as I see fit. Um, if you're going to be doing this and storing them out of the way, use a sweetener or use a stabilizer when you add it in, but follow the instructions. If you don't need to use it, why use it? So I'm just going to drink this bottle and enjoy. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, give me some ideas for making some Viking blood mead easily and simply. And uh, you know, check out the other videos, subscribe, you know, do all those things and comment and like and yeah, do those things YouTubers tell you to do. And uh, Karen Humbering guys, see you later. Oh. And uh, oh, just can't help myself. Rocket fuel. Yeah, I have loads of these glasses. Why? Because they, they were cheap and they look kind of cool. A little pinky going. Anyway, see you later.